I'm Adam Johnson. My wife and I have grown our real estate business from nothing into the millions and now my life's purpose is to show you how we did it so that you can do the same. Starting this month, I'm uploading a ton of free and very helpful videos that will be your step-by-step -step guide to starting an Airbnb business utilizing our go-to property acquisition technique called Subject 2. Follow along these course videos, take notes, and dive into the exciting, challenging, yet very rewarding world of real estate investing with me, Adam Johnson. Enjoy. Welcome back. I'm your host, Adam Johnson. Now we're going to talk about what you physically need to put into your short-term rentals to make them you know, what your guests are going to want, uh, what are the necessities, what are some extras, and what are just some good ideas that you may not have thought about. It's a very common sense approach, so um, just, let's jump right into it. Here's what we're going to cover. Again, basic uh, necessities, but with a little bit of difference because this is not, um, it's not a hotel, it's a short-term rental, and you kind of get set it up a little bit different than you would at traditional rental property. So um, the condition of your listing. Let me just say this. I've seen people uh, do the bare minimum minimum uh, to set up their short-term rentals. Listen, if you wouldn't stay in it, how can you expect your guests to want to live in there um, for a couple of days, a couple of weeks? Make it so that it's, it's enjoyable. Make it so that it's comfortable. Make it so that it's inviting. You know, the colors, the, the linens, the bed. It's got to be something that people want, a place they want to stay at not somewhere they have to stay for the sake of necessity, okay? So make sure it's good enough for you. Um, make it right. As, as I've said before, I always tell people that I work with when they have a question for me, when I have options, I always say, make it right. If it was your property, if it was, um, if it was your repairs, if, if it was your setup, how would you do it for your, uh, your house? Make sure it looks good. And also, you know, realize that you're competing with hotels. If you've been to a hotel, most hotels, uh, leave nothing up, you know, for nothing to chance. They take care of almost every detail. The house, I'm sorry, the rooms are usually very clean, very, very, very clean. Um, if they have a little kitchenette, that's a bonus. Um, but for the most part, you're competing with, competing with hotels and um, hotels go all out. So I'm not saying you have to go spend $10,000, you know, to, to, uh, to furnish your property, but just keep in mind your competition. You want to be better than them. You want to be better than a hotel outside of just having more space in a hotel. You want to be as clean, as nice, or more. So keep that in mind, make sure it's right. Furniture for your property. Um, when we first began our first Airbnb, it took us two weeks uh, trying to find things off a of marketplace, running around, you know, trying to put it together. We had little to no money, um, but I will tell you, so it took us two weeks to furnish our very first Airbnb to set it up and get it uh, on the, the market. Now it takes us three days, three days of ordering everything off of Amazon, of me building stuff, of my wife, you know, telling me where all the decor goes and all that kind of stuff. It takes us three days from when we decide that we're going to make said property a short-term rental after that three days later it's on the site and we're ready to to get guests in so um i understand that we all start from different beginnings if you started like us you have to be budget friendly because you don't have a giant budget moving forward as you continue to acquire more and more uh, properties those properties when you have three or four will pay for the furnishings of property number five and so on and so forth they just start kind of snowballing like that so i understand the very first uh two or three may be kind of uh you need to be budget friendly obviously uh, but just keep in mind you still want to find quality if you can um you got to make sure that the furniture you put into the property fits your guest count um, if you advertise that you can host up to seven guests, but you have one bed, well, that's going to be a problem. So you want to make sure that your, your dining room table, your bed count, your living room set will accommodate the number of guests that you are willing to allow into your property for each reservation. Otherwise, it's just, it, it's not a good look when people, when 12 people show up to uh, a three bed, three bed house because you're advertising, we host up to 12 people. So keep that in mind. You also want to make sure that the the, the furniture that you get is durable. Uh, again, there's a fine line of, of budget friendly and quality. There's a fine line. As you grow, and even the first few properties, you want to go back and replenish those properties with, with higher quality bedding, higher quality furniture, because um, when you buy cheap stuff, you end up buying it multiple times. All right. So as I said, the very first uh, house we did, the first probably two or three, we were still learning our processes. It took us two weeks. 
Um, and we put, you know, the best we could find off of Facebook Marketplace, which is not where you find quality products. Um, it took us a little while to build up our cash flow uh, from generating more and more Airbnbs. They generated more cash flow for us. We could take that, uh, that excess money and go back and replenish those first few properties. We are always, always, always fixing properties or, or, or bringing them into the new year. We're always, you know, changing out light fixtures, replace flooring if needed. Don't ever think that you're, you're done uh, improving your property. This is something that will always happen. We have 22 right now, and there's always something for us to do. And I love it because I always want to make sure that, one, I'm spending our money on our business as opposed to leaving it um, as profit at the end of the year. And that's a different video. That's a tax video. <laughs> But I want to make sure that we're spending our money on our properties um, at our discretion. So we're always going back and fixing properties, um, you know, putting bigger beds in some of the home, uh, bedrooms, whatever, putting TVs in all the bedrooms, those types of things that you can are, are great after um, you kind of build that cash flow and build up revenue. Um, another thing that we found very useful that our guests love is, is putting a desk. Uh, we, we get like we get these little desks from Target. They're like one hundred and ten dollars. Uh, I build them in 15 minutes and our, our guests love it because most, a lot of our guests, not most, but a lot of our guests are traveling professionals. So they need a little workspace. That is great. Very beneficial. They love it. Um, and it's not, it's not real, uh, it's not very expensive and it's a good, one more good thing to have it, as a traveler. So just something to think about, uh, when you're, when you're starting to furnish your, your first short-term rental bedding. Now, what we do with beds is we put the biggest possible bed in the, in, in the room, a small room, you know, a twin bed or a queen. Every master bedroom has a king. Um, that just goes without saying because your guests want to be comfortable. Um, and what we use, we, uh, we have a, a specific mattress that we use off of Amazon. It comes in a box. It's a pillow top. We've had at least 200 guests, at least 200 message us. Uh, requesting uh, the link for that um, for that uh, uh, mattress top. So quality goes a long way. Make your beds uh, as big as, I recommend putting as big as bed as you can put into a, a room uh, with a good pillow top because you want your guests to be comfortable. Now, you don't have to put the biggest uh, bed because um, if you're looking to, more, to cater towards more families, which is fine too, you can take one or two houses or just your first Airbnb, your first short-term rental, and put two, uh, put two small beds in one of the rooms. That way kids can have their own beds. Um, we have two houses like that, but for the most part, our rule of thumb is the biggest bed that will fit in that room. Um, and we've had no problems with guests complaining about um, the bed size or amount of beds or anything like that. Um, I do recommend having at least three times the amount of linens per bed. So if I have one king bed, I need three king linens, three king um, uh, uh, pillows and all that kind of stuff. You want to have obviously what's on the bed. You want to have two backups because when your cleaners are in there and there's a problem or, or a, a guest stained a sheet or something, they have backups. And if you're not available to get uh, to instantly replenish that backup, and there's another checkout. Well, now you're down to your last set of sheets. So uh, we recommend always having at least three times the amount of linens needed, including uh, uh, um, <laughs> towels as well. I went blank for a second. So um, yeah, beds, linens, go quality. Uh, if you're if you're if you got to go budget friendly, up you know uh, for the first couple of months, I totally understand that. But when you have time and you have the the finances, always go back and make your 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 properties better. Um, and at the bottom, I have Amazon. We use about, we get about 95% of our furnishings, everything off of Amazon. Um, we do kind of go locally to resource our couches and resource our living, uh, dining room tables and things of that nature. But for the most part, everything arrives within about a two or three day span from Amazon. Um, I pack up the truck or the trailer. We go to the, to the property, we download and I start breaking out boxes. It's more beneficial when you're able to do this, when you have the money to order everything brand new off of Amazon, that is more beneficial than saving money and taking two or three weeks by piecing it together uh, using Facebook Marketplace. Time is money. And <clears throat> yes, for us to furnish a three bedroom house through Amazon usually is about 
including all the systems we talked about, you know, the door lock system, all that kind of stuff. Usually for us, it's about five to $6,000, okay? Yes, we could do it cheaper by buying everything secondhand off of Facebook. We may save two or $3,000, but we also lost two or three weeks of income and we have uh, less quality products in our homes. So if you can use a credit card, borrow some money from a family member, three, four, five thousand dollars furnish that property with high quality products, um, yeah, high quality products, and then let the property make money for you. You can pay off that credit card, you can pay off a family member, but I recommend having quality products in your home from, from day one if possible. TV and internet. Okay, it goes without saying people need to watch TV. Um, what we do, we do not provide cable service or satellite service to all 22 properties. Don't do that. We provide uh, smart TVs and with, with fast uh, Wi-Fi. Um, that way, all of our guests can log into their Netflix. They can log into their service provider, their satellite provider using our TVs, but we don't have that bill of $60, $70, $80 a month per property for the sake of having something to watch, um, having TV to watch. All of our guests can log into their Netflix or Hulu, all that kind of stuff. They can watch their TV. Everyone's happy. Um, so we do smart TVs. We uh, put, I think we put 50 inch TVs or bigger in the living rooms and 43 inch TVs are bigger in some of the bedrooms. That's what we do and it works well for, for our guests and our clientele. But smart TVs and high, uh, high speed Wi-Fi um, internet goes a long way. And in the long run, much cheaper than trying to uh, have satellite or cable for each individual property. We're not doing that. Curtains and blinds, okay? Um, where we are in Tennessee, almost all houses have blinds. Almost all of them, the builders put blinds in them. Uh, that's, just, that's just how it works out. What we have found is that 99, almost every time blinds are going to be damaged, uh, whether it be kids, children, or even adults. For some reason, some adults can't work the blinds. It is what it is. So what we've done is we went through and put all curtains up, take the blinds down because I've replaced the same blinds on the same window three or four times before we realized that this is going to continue happening. So from day one, when we go into a property now, if it has blinds, we'll leave them there, but then we'll still put up curtains uh, over the over the, uh, the windows because at some point, at some point, those blinds will be damaged by pets, uh, children, or even adults. So um, that's what we've experience and that's what we recommend is doing curtains um yeah curtains go curtains not only just curtains blackout curtains because it people um they can sleep better it's it's just they it's more enjoyable the blackout curtains are a little bit more expensive but again it goes a long way um kitchenware if your property which if you have to do a full house it should have a kitchen um we recommend the basic essentials basic necessities uh, for, for cooking. We don't have a lot of specialty tools, but all houses are furnished um, with the very basic, you know, pots and pans, uh, enough spoons, silverware, forks, um, bowls, whatever, for at least the number of people that we put uh, available for the property. So if this property will host seven people, then we need to have at least seven of everything uh, individualized um, in that kitchen to, to go along with the basic necessities of cooking the pots and pans, the strainer. Um, people like the, uh, the wine opener, those kinds, those kinds of things. Um, so, and to do that, you don't have to break the bank. I'm all about putting quality products in the, in the homes, but silverware is silverware uh, for most people, including myself. So we get a lot of our stuff from like Goodwill um, uh, or some secondhand stores. We've, Walmart, we get a lot of our stuff from Walmart, the uh, bundles and that kind of stuff. It goes a long way and it doesn't break the bank. Again, we have about a five to $6,000 budget and all that fits within that budget. And we just keep doing the same thing over and over and over with each new property. So if it's, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Is that right? <laughs> Extras. Um, all of our homes have coffee makers. Almost everybody drinks coffee. Um, you can do a Keurig or you can do a traditional. Either one, you're not wrong. As long as you know uh, in the description when you're putting it on the short-term rental pages, the Airbnb uh, site, you just want to disclose, you know, we have a Keurig, blah, blah, blah. Do, we, do you provide that? If you provide sugar and um, sweetener and all that kind of stuff, just put that in there. Um, I said the wine bottle, the bathroom toiletries, uh, phone charging stations. All those little things like that, again, if you think it would be cool to have at your house, um, put in your Airbnb. With 
There's a limit though, because just keep in mind all those little small things, like a little phone charging station, those little things, board games and such, they have potential to come up missing. So don't put, I don't recommend putting any high ticket uh, items that can be taken easily in your Airbnbs. Uh, you know, do, it's at your discretion. All right. So just keep in mind when you're furnishing your things, don't, you don't want to put a $200 cutlery set into your Airbnbs. That's why we go to Goodwill and Walmart and those types of things, because those things are going to be bent, broken. Uh, cups are going to be dropped. Bowls are going to be broken. That's just what happens because unfortunately, as I said before in other courses, no one's going to care as much as you. So these people that are traveling, they don't care that their kid dropped a, a, a bowl and broke it or that they threw the spoon in the trash. They don't, they won't even tell you about it. You'll just do an inventory one day and realize that you had three bowls instead of seven bowls. So don't break the bank um, to furnish your properties. So that was kind of a quick, uh, what we put into our properties. We don't overthink it. It's very simplistic. We use Amazon. We use the same stuff over and over and over. Um, Wi-Fi TV goes a very long way and Walmart goes a long way. You don't have to break the bank to furnish your properties, but realize that time is money. You don't want to take two or three weeks to furnish that property. Get your house up and running, get your room up and running so that you can start making money. Um, yeah, it's that simple. So guys, that was a quick rundown of what goes into the houses. I got so much more information. I'll see you guys on the next module. Let's get Thank to it. Thank you for watching. If you got lots of value from our free content, you're gonna love the one-on-one -on -one coaching, group coaching, and seminars that we offer on our website at reisimplified.co. We look forward to guiding you through the early steps of building your business, buying real estate, and working towards financial freedom. Let's go buy some houses.